And then we come up to Arouge. Arouge gets its name because there's a little river. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome to another video of A Lap Around. This time we'll be going for a lap around Circuit de spa Francorchamps in Belgium for this weekend's Belgian Grand Prix. We'll also be doing a little bit differently, this time we'll be going in the rain because apparently it's supposed to rain this weekend. Although, being Formula 1, it'll hardly rain everywhere except for the actual circuit itself. Now, Spa is a circuit that's a favorite track of many drivers. For me, it's not my all-time favorite, but it's a track I definitely enjoy driving due to the fact that it's a really old-school circuit with some amazing elevation changes, as you'll see. Spa is also the longest circuit on the Formula 1 calendar, just over 7 kilometers, and that's about 4.35 miles here in the US. And it's a circuit where if you get the lap right, it's really rewarding. Although it's also very tricky. All right, so let's get into a lap around Spa. Now, starting out in the rain at Spa, the most important thing is you do not want to use a lot of the curbs at Spa because unlike most of the European tracks, the curbs here at Spa are not necessarily all flat. So you have to know which curbs to hit and which to not. This is the front straightaway. It's not crazy long, but you can actually get up to a decent speed on it all the way up into eighth gear. And in the rain, the big thing here is just avoid the rubber. So when you're accelerating, be about one car length over from the regular racing line. Now we're coming up to turn one, La Source. And the big thing here, gonna be braking right before this 100 meter board. You can see the rubber on the road. It's a little bit on the left there. With most circuits, you just avoid the rubber entirely. The thing with Spa is a lot of the circuit is not flat. A lot of it is cambered, as you can see going to turn one. That is definitely not flat. And so the big thing here is you have to use the rubber a little bit, which makes it very tricky in the rain. So when we are on track position, we're about a car length off. And the big thing is the right side of our car is not in the rubber, but the left side is. And the reason is the circuit is so cambered, you wanna make the most of that camber and get a good exit. And so we're braking, braking, and then you're gonna move back to the left so you can widen up the corner. La Source is a very tight hairpin. And then you can use a lot of steering here. Come over that rubber and you wanna get as close as you can to that apex curb as you can see. You don't wanna hit the curb itself, but the closer you get, you'll feel the car RPMs jump a little bit and you'll get a much better exit. Because after this turn, it's flat out for a very long time. Now exiting in the rain, the big thing here, is don't exit all the way into the rubber on that curb. That's what you do in the dry, but as you can see with the rubber lines, it's very slippery, and you got plenty of room here as well. Now, as we go down the hill, we're coming up to the most famous turns this track, Eau Rouge, and then the left-hander into Radion. Now, for here, you're gonna stay all the way to the right, and by this time, the car will be going quick enough, you don't have to worry about the rubber. And then we come up to Eau Rouge. Eau Rouge gets its name because there's a little river. Eau Rouge in French just means water red or red water because there's a little river that goes through often floods a lot too now the big thing here is you'll see there's this massive curb on the left side in the dry you can go completely over in the wet generally you just want to get just the left side of the car barely onto it because you want a straight line to the turn in the wet the car is not going to rotate as easily and at high speed the car can become very unstable with too much steering input so you want to be very smooth so use this curb on the left and just straight line it. It's a little bumpy. And then up the hill, normally hit the inside curb, but you can see all that rubber. Wait till the rubber in the rain, you can see that little shiny bit on the track. And the thing about the rubber is the water sits over it and you'll hydroplane. Now, of course, with this being so sloped, the water's gonna run down too. So through Eau Rouge, you can see a lot of different lines, which is pretty cool. Now, as we go up through Eau Rouge into Radion, the next turn, you see it's still very slippery stay just to the outside and then you keep the wheel pointed straight here you're not going to hit that curb on the left because that will upset the car and then what you're going to do is just let the car roll out and through ratty on the left hander don't hit this curb on the right either but at this point you're carrying a lot of speed so the rubber's not a big deal and now we're coming on to the camel straight now this is a very long straightaway and the other thing is you're flat out from very early on the fastest point on the track. So next we're coming up to Lake Combe. Now Lake Combe is a new chicane that is not in the original layout, but Lake Combe is a, one of the best overtaking spots in this track, particularly because it's a very hard braking zone. Now the trick for Lake Combe in the wet, obviously you're going to want to break off the rubber, but you can see there's a lot of puddles forming, so it can be very slippery as well. And then here you can set the brake bias a little more rearwards as well. Helps with overtaking because in the wet, very easy to lock the fronts. Usually they're doing most of the braking. The thing about this set of turns is you have to prioritize the corners. And Lake Home is a set of a right hander, a left hander, and a right hander. Now the trick is you need to prioritize that very end right hander. To do that, you have to sacrifice in the middle of the corner. And in the wet, sacrificing corners is key because the straightaway is where you're only going to be flat out. 
most of the flat out turns are not going to be flat out in the wet. This right hander, you can see it's very slippery on the rubber, but you have to get the car pointed correctly if we're going to sacrifice on this left hand turn. You're going to go really wide here, so no rubber at all, but then what that does is now we're pointed in a straight line where we can set up nicely for the final turn here. Now this final right hander on Lake Home is one of the corners where you can gain a lot of speed if you do it correctly. However, in the wet, you have to remember that it's faster than you think, and so you gotta avoid the rubber. Now to do this, you wanna stay a little bit to the inside. So you can see here, we're not all the way out of that white line. And then as you turn the wheel, you avoid the rubber, avoid the rubber. But once you get to the apex, you're gonna encounter the rubbers. Now you have to be really confident with your turn in here because when you exit to reduce your steering angle, if you have it wrong, you're gonna hit that curb on the left-hand side. Now if you take a closer look at the curb, this is what I was saying about how Spa does not have flat curbs. You can see it is quite angled, and if we go over it, you can see the car really starts leaning to the right. A little bumpy as well, and the big thing is in the wet, it will just shoot you right off. Because on the paint, it is very, very slippery. Even if you're on that white line, it is very slippery. So when you exit through there, you have to make sure you avoid the rubber and definitely avoid that curb if you don't get it right. Now we're coming to the downhill bit. Now this downhill bit, again, you're going to break decently far over, and you can see there's a lot of rubber everywhere. Because the big thing is just stay a little bit off the racing line. And now that we have a lot of runoff here, it's not necessarily bad if you make a mistake here, but the trick is really go to the outside because the regular racing line here is not that tight to the inside. So when you're driving in the wet, to go around that rubber, you have to go quite wide here. So if you're going for an overtake here, it's a little bit risky in the rain. Keep the wheel to the right through here, and then start, and here you go, you can see we're gonna cross the rubber again. A Little bit slippery here, but now the wheel is straight for exiting. And then we're gonna stay to the right for the upcoming downhill left-hander. However, you can see the rubber again on the track. So we're not gonna go all the way to the right because of how slippery that will be. Now this turn here, you're gonna turn in just a little bit later. So very, very late apex. And you can see we're gonna cross the rubber again, but we're not crossing the rubber in our turn in point, which is a good thing. Now, this exit curb here, it looks flat and in the dry, you can use a lot of it. But in the wet, again, it's very slippery. And if you look very carefully, a little bit of AstroTurf to the right of that. And if you get on that, forget it, you're into that tire wall. It is beyond slippery here. So the good thing in the rain, just avoid this curb entirely. Now we're heading down the hill to a corner called Puon, and Puon is a very, very fast left-hander. A lot of downhill elevation as well. So Puon's a corner where you need to be going quick enough for the downforce, but of course in the rain, you're not gonna be going crazy fast. So for Puon, the general trick here is just stay around the outside. Because normally what you would do in the dry is you'd stick to the inside and then just open up the wheel. But in the rain, you can't do that. And this corner in the dry is very tricky as well. So in the wet, really, really hard to get right. But if you get it right, you'll get a good little exit because Puan is almost flat out now, and there's a little bit of a straightaway after it. And if you can get it right, you can find a good amount of lap time. Now Puan in the rain, the general thing is just avoid the rubber here. Uh, it's decently wide. So you can see we just go around the outside here. We're no longer on the rubber. Plenty of grip here. We're gonna cross the rubber here, but we're going in a straight line. The rubber in a straight line is not a big deal. And then again, you just want to start pointing the car more towards the left here. So you're going to cross the rubber again. But now again, as we open up the wheel, no more rubber, because normally in the dry, you'd run all the way to that curb on the right. Now this bit right here, it's not much of a straightaway, but you're carrying a lot of speed, so it is another hard braking zone. And the really important thing here is getting the car rotated correctly. So as you can see, not too much rubber on the inside. It's a little bit of a cambered surface, so generally just kind of keep the right sides off the rubber and you'll be fine. And then through this right-hander, you don't want to hit that inside curb because it's just showered in rubber. But then you can see there's a massive puddle on the left, so you just kind of go in between. And now we find ourselves on the inside for this left-hander. And again, we're going to cross the rubber, but we're just going to open up the wheel, go around the outside. A little bit of puddles there but we're not in the rubber. So you gotta pick and choose your way through. And you see, now we find ourselves completely parallel to the curb. But again, we're not all the way to the right-hand side on the curb. And this curb is flat, but as you can see, covered in rubber, so very slippery in the rain. Next, we're coming up to the flat, but very high-speed section, which is the final part of SWA. And the trick for here is, again, break off the racing line. You really have to incorporate that in SPA. You know, some tracks you can break a little bit on the rubber if you're confident on the brakes. Spa is just unforgiving. If you break on that rubber, you're off. And as you can see, it's straight into gravel. Stay off the rubber here. 
you can go a little bit to the outside and then just cut over and then cross the rubber right here and you can see you can get the car pointed in a straight line again so even though you're making these weird lines to go around the rubber you're not compromising your exit that much a lot of rubber here as you can see so you can either stay to the inside and then just use the exit curb here but the big thing here is throttle control this turn in the dry depending on the car may or may not be flat out but in the rain it's definitely not flat out and if you're very smooth with the throttle you can gain some good speed on the upcoming straightaway but if you're not confident with the car this turn will catch you out generally in the rain the good thing to do is just go around the outside here so you can see there's no rubber and then you can just cut back over into a straight line avoid these curbs entirely if you hit them in the dry you'll probably spin you hit it in the wet forget it we just go on one for reference yep there we go a little bit of astroturf there as well so just insanely slippery don't do that and this next bit is entirely flat out all the way to Blanchimont, the very quick left-hander. I'm now switching to voiceover because my audio and video just completely lost sync with one another. So coming up to Blanchimont, this is a turn where you're going very, very fast. Matter of fact, pretty much almost at the top speed of your car, so therefore you're going to have a lot of downforce. In the rain, generally, you don't have to take a wet line if you're in mixed conditions. However, if it is raining a lot, generally the good trick I would recommend, you stay to the outside, and then you start cutting in, but when you cut in, you cross the rubber when your steering wheel is straight. What that does is you're not going to lose a ton of speed, and then you're also not going to lose traction by going over that rubber. Whereas if you take the normal racing line through there and use the exit curb, the car will end up all over the place. Now that very inside curb is tempting as a way to shorten your distance through the rain. However, it is very steeply cambered, and if you go over that inside curb, the car will be greatly upset, not only in the dry, but if you do it in the wet, Forget it. Next, we're coming up to the bus stop chicane. It's the final set of corners at the spa. The bus stop chicane is a great area for overtaking. It's a little bit of an uphill, so you're not going to lock the brakes too much. And the other thing is it's a little bit cambered as well, which makes turning in very easy, and the car will rotate nice and easily for you. Now, the big thing in the rain here is just stay off the rubber. So not all the way to the left-hand side. And then you're going to break in a straight line and then start turning in a little bit early actually this is where this turn gets a little odd now this inside curb as you can see is actually pretty flat and as a matter of fact it's so flat that in the rain you can just completely go over it however you do have to be a little careful if you look closely you can see there's actually a sausage curb hidden there you hit that right next to the green paint that will definitely screw your lap up so the big thing is just hit that actual bit of curbing and avoid the sausage curb entirely and then keep the wheel to the right and point the car almost as if you're going into the pit lane. What this does is now you're at a very slow speed, the car's not gonna wanna rotate as easily. So the big thing is just stay off the rubber by going almost into the pit lane. And then you're gonna do a very late turn in. Now it's a very sharp turn in onto the straightaway. And you know you've got the corner right if you're parallel with the curb and the RPMs jump up a little bit. Now, of course, the reason you don't wanna exit all the way wide like the normal racing line is there is a lot of rubber. And the other thing is that final curb, that final exit curb, it's not entirely flat either. So in the dry, it's a little tricky if you get it wrong. And in the wet, you just want to avoid it entirely. So that is a lap around spa in the wet. But for my hot lap, I'm actually going to show you a lap in the dry. Because spa in the dry is a rather cool circuit due to the fact that it's very high speed, but you also need a lot of downforce. And so with an F1 car, it's just a perfect combination. Let me show you that lap.
All right, so there you go. That is my guide of how to get a good lap around Spa for this weekend's Belgian Grand Prix. And you got to see the challenges you'll face in the wet, but also what the circuit looks like at full speed in the dry. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.